Sarah, maybe we can start with what we left off, the slide we read last week, Kalyani. Maniaji, would, would you want to kind of summarize what we discussed last class? Because I missed it as well. Oh, so. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> if anybody is ready to do it, I'd let them do. Otherwise, I will do it. No problem. Kalyani, if you want to do it, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Last time, uh, we discussed about the four types of devotees, Arthi, Artharthi, Jignasu, and Nani. Most of you know what type of these devotees are. And Swami says, in whatever way you pray to me, I will... Uh, gratify that uh, gift, that uh, boon, whatever you want. So I hope you all know about Arthi, Artharthi, the meaning of, uh, anyone can uh, explain it to the whole audience if, you, if uh, anyone wants it. Yeah. Uh, so the I first think we learned that Arthi is someone who, um, seeks God when they're in physical pain or suffering. Um, yeah. And then Artharthi is one who is in suffering because of wealth or for looking for prosperity. Yeah. And then a Jignyasu is someone who's searching for um, truth or knowledge. Yeah. And I think Jnani is one who's already in the living in that awareness of Brahman. Yeah, but yeah, a little more I would like to add the Arthi, you know, not only his, uh, he has sufferings, he wants uh, Padavi, power and Pratishta and then fame and name and all those things, you know, the worldly things which he needs, Mariada, that is, you know, people should respect him. And um, progeny, we want our children, we, our daughter is not uh, married, please such such worldly desires, you know, they are all artis. They come under category of artis. Artharthi not only satisfied with all the other uh, problems, just now I mentioned about arti. He wants prosperity, wealth. He wants a lot of wealth. He wants to collect it. And Krishna says, okay, I will grant that wish also. And then the third person, Jignasu, he does Nishkama Karma. And he is uh, expecting the guru to uh, bless him. Uh, so he is already in the, on the way. Atma Vicharana, he is also, he is on his way. And uh, then comes the, um, Krishna's grace is there for him also. He blesses him to, with a, uh, whatever he asks for. And the fourth is Nani. He is already in that uh, stage. But uh, Kalani was asking last time the question, why does the nanny need any grace? So I think we, the answer was, nannies also have are some kind of, they cling on to something. So all those shackles should be completely cut off. Then only Krishna will definitely bless them with nana. That's what uh, we discussed last time. And there was a question from Sister uh, Anandi. Uh, Anandi sister, are you there? I think she is there. Yes, uh, Sairam uh, Mani Auntie. Sairam, Sairam. You know, should we answer, the, should we go to that to question of your, uh, um, in, a, the, in a room you are locked and the key is lost. Who will, what is the key? How do you find the key? That was her question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody wants to comment on that? Uh, 
can i ask you one question um sister anandi uh, sure auntie is it love from inside or is it love from outside uh, of course it's locked from outside if it is locked from inside Huh. Uh, uh, I would be able to unlock. So oh. certainly it's locked by uh, locked by someone else uh, in the outside. Okay. So um, symbolically what I understand, I, I will share it at the end. If anyone wants to uh, address this question, please do, go ahead. I wasn't here last week. Just wanted to understand the concept behind the question. Is the question as to if you are praying to God, what category of uh, in the force for uh, type of uh, person you'll fall into? Is that the question? No, Narmada. You know, yeah. uh, in the first paragraph, you find if something is behind something else inside a closed room, for instance, how can the sun illumine? Oh, okay, okay, okay. That right. question came. And then you know she suggested she uh, gave up uh, gave, yeah. came up with this question. Okay. So um, brother was suggesting that you know there are windows it can be open, but <laughs> Arun says Arun said no even the windows are also closed. <laughs> um, so how can you get the uh, key for to open it? Anybody can answer this question. So, sorry, Ramandi. So, last time, uh, last time, but, uh, I don't know, explain. Okay. That only you had to pray to the God to come out or get the light. Thank uh, get you. The, yeah, that is it. Somebody should open the door from outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the only way, the only key for that is uh, prayer to the Lord. So, someone will come to your rescue and then he will open the door. Anybody else? I want to say, Ramandi, I want to add on that, uh, for example, that uh, Prabhupada was in a situation when our Saris was taken out. That time, yeah. she just only have a strong faith to Lord Krishna and only the person she was thinking is him. And then it's appeared like her problem was solved there. And uh, he's the only one who could be able to rescue her from that situation. Even though yeah. her husband's, everybody in the, uh, uh, every person at the time, but nobody couldn't be able to help her. He's the only one who could be able to help her to get out of that situation. Sairam, thank you. Sairam. So, whatever is in between you and Bhagwan, the sun will shine when you take out that whatever is hiding the sunlight from coming inside. So whatever is between you and Bhagwan, if you just take it out, then you know the sun will shine us. Just like Bhagwan's grace also will come, the door will be open. So what are the things that are hiding uh, in between uh, God and ourselves? Uh, Sairam and they the uh, between God and me, you know, the, uh, sometimes in my in a very stressful situation or maybe under you know, the distress, uh, the um, uh, even though you know, the sun is there and you know, the all the opportunities are there, but I wouldn't be able to see because my mind is not clear. You know, the, the, to receive those you know, the, uh, um, signals or the positive things, even it could be because of my karma or maybe something else, even if I am outside the, you know, the, the uh, room, you know, the, in a veranda or open space, sometimes between sun and me, there would be a passing clouds. You know, sometimes passing clouds continuously it would go without you know, the taking um, the uh, sun rays or whatever I wanted to have it. So I either I have to patiently wait until the clouds are passed or maybe you know, the, the, I have to purify my mind to get into that, to receive the sunlight. Maybe in a closed room, 
my mind is not clear it's with full of dirt or maybe it's with something else you know the, it has been filled first i remove those thought you know the, the dirts and then maybe i would be able to receive all the you know the grace from god or from the rays from the sun you know the, that's my uh, little uh, opinion or the little uh, uh, opinion from this one exactly sister anandhi you know our minds are full of dirt we have got no clarity in our mind so first of all if we can get the first thing is attachment so much attachment in, is in our minds that we have to slowly wipe it off very uh, clearly so that uh, now our minds are clear like a, a mirror so that the sun can shine on us i feel so and then if if you think that it's an imaginary uh, situation where you know you're locked up inside the room and the key is lost key is uh, somebody has uh, closed it from the situation uh, if is it imaginary thing you know which you are doing uh, which you are saying uh, um, sister anandhi is it uh, uh, so, sometimes you know even practically in the worldly worldly life sometimes key it will be in the pocket you know but we will be searching everywhere or yeah. even the cell phone would be in my back but i will be searching for everywhere maybe because of my unsteady mind with so much you know the uh, uh, problems i wouldn't even concentrate on where i put my key i would be thinking that someone has locked from outside how mm. i would ex escape and i would be crying inside correct so you have found the answer for your own question i hope so <laughs> thank you maybe uh, money and you said that uh, if swami comes in if i i would be able to ask where is the key you know the yeah, you, you cry out to him saying swami i am locked in please come and help me rescue me so he will definitely do that <laughs> Uh, um, yeah. Brother Dasan has his hands yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. So, so Sairam Auntie, I can give you another example. It's a sunlight. It will give the light to everyone same. Even if we take the street lamp, it gives the light to everyone same. But if you are far away, you won't be able to get the light. So you have to go closer to the street lamp. Then you'll get the light. Same thing, you have to go closer to the court. then you'll get the grace and blessing thank you saira i think so i think so uh okay Could I let's go ahead and read this again so that we remember or should we go yeah, yeah okay yeah. please please saira i am like the kalpa vriksha tree of heaven wish fulfilling tree my task is to give each what he asks for i have no prejudice or and no favoritism not even the shadow of cruelty can touch me no fault can be imputed on to me the rays of the sun fall equally upon all that are directly in their way but if something is behind some something else inside a closed room for instance how can the sun illuminate cultivate the higher yearnings and you receive the higher stages the fault lies in the aspirant and his aspirations not in the attitude of the lord yeah arjuna man gives up revering and seeking me who is his very self how foolish of him he is not anxious to reach me on the other hand he pursues lesser attainments that are temporary untrue and transitory i shall tell you the reason for this strange and stupid behavior karma so, so harmos karmo pasana karmo karmo pasana yeah. work with an eye on the fruits give quick results man seeks only what is available here and now in the concrete form capable of me being grasped by his senses man generally finds reality too difficult to attain so he is carried away by the attraction of filmsy pleasures all away from the full joy deri deriverable from transcending the senses 
The achievement of jnana is the inner victory. It is won after long and arduous struggle. Men do not generally have the needed patience. Moreover, they attach greater importance to the gross body, the stuta sarira itself. Stula, stula sarira. Stula sarira itself. The body that body can be happy only with objects that cater to the senses. So men do not seek jnana, which will send them to paths where the senses are unwanted. They yearn for karma siddhi, fulfillment of worldly ambitions, not jnana siddhi. Those who are caught by urges of the intellect are fewer than those who are caught by the senses and other urges. The sensual minded are drawn by the obvious, the patent, the perceptible, and physical. The few who are spiritually minded yearn for imperceptible, imperceptible, invisible bliss of merging with the universal absolute. Theirs is the correct path. Karmal pasana, work with an eye on the fruits, is the incorrect path. My task is to make clear to all the value of dharma karmas, which have to be adopted after due discrimination. Okay. So this was discussed last week, I suppose, right? Uh, no, no, I think we, of course, we went through this whole thing. Okay. Um, the difference between karma pasana, the, those who work with the eye and the fruits, and nishkama karma, those who don't we, we wish for any fruit to for further actions, all these things. Mm -hmm. So, why is it that uh, people always with the gross body we go in only for the things which we, which are perceptible and which uh, bring us good fruits for our actions? We never yearn for the jnana uh, siddhi. We never go in for the realization of jnana, but we are always caught. Uh, in the senses and the senses pleasures and their urges. I think we discussed this last year. Any question, if they have any question? I think I wasn't yeah. here last week, but I think, I mean, from my point of view, uh, for me, it's easier, right? Because I think we are all in in the Maya or for used to seeing physically things, right? Mm -hmm. So when you do something, if you see the fruits of your actions or something that is physical that you can, your senses can see, then you know it has happened. So we always kind of want, I don't know, um, I, I guess from childhood, you are kind of trained in a way <laughs> you see your actions or you have to see what you have worked for, or sometimes you, you know, like keep an eye on your goal. That's sort of you know, in the schools and all that we say that, right? So I guess, like, for example, we study for an exam and for a good mark. So that is your goal. So I think you're trying to train in that way. So you see that, and that's why I think we go for it. So kind of going, like not seeing it, it's kind of takes some time to kind of unlearn that. That's yeah. my thought. Yeah, yeah. See, in the last paragraph, Swami is saying, theirs is the, uh, karma pasana is the incorrect path. Mm -hmm. My task is to make clear to all, the, to all the value of dharma karma, which has to be adopted after due discrimination. Swami wants us to understand, of course, we are following that path only, karma, karma pasana. Right. Try to do that book, dharma karma. That is, uh, Swami is advising us. Anybody else? Because of our, our desire and attachment, that's not like we just stay small. Instead of, if the, you ask the God's grace, He's there to for everything. But like our, the Maya, the illusion, we just stuck with that, like the bold desires, and we have faced a lot of problems, and every little things we ask Him one by one. And instead of we don't have the desire or attachment and then we see the vision for that to the right path. 
Sära, ex mig i Hamburg. Sära. Ja. So, and the, how can we... Uh, sorry, Vijaya, oh. uh, Vijaya can go ahead, please. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you go first, Irina. Um, no, I just wanted to um, ask, yeah, how to, uh, like, uh, just to, I'm trying to define the Dharma Karma. Uh, it's only with, um, I'm thinking it's not uh, that whatever you do with, uh, without any attachment um, would be considered as a Dharma Karma. And there would be something else also. So if we can discuss about what is Dharma Karma, then it would be clear yeah. For everyone, which which karma we have to taken up with us. So only thing I now I'm thinking without any attachment, without expecting any um, fruit of our, your action. And there could be some more. So if we all discuss, then we would be yeah. clear with that. Thank you, Saira. Sister Aruna, the following paragraphs, Swami is going to define what is dharma karma. Okay. He's, yeah, the following paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Vijaya, oh, oh, okay, okay, good. Thank you so much, Santi. Sairam. Sairam, no, I, I, I was actually going to go on that track all day because when you're a student and your dharma is to get good marks in school, so it is like an eye on the outcome, right? You want good marks. Uh, you know, it's that only karma pasana, is it just for student? And yet Swami's uh, school uh you know it, it and, and those who are in swami's uh, students in swami schools you can tell it's uh it's much more you know it's a balanced thing that you know you also give service you also do grammar seva you you do so much more even as a student rather than karma upasana uh, but i think it has to be balanced with what stage of life you're in Saira. if sai satishan is there it can answer He's not here yet. I don't not see. yet yet. Okay, okay. I think um, Swami gives an example of a student who is writing the exam, and then you know he is thinking about instead of writing the answers to the question, he is thinking about what future is going to hold for me, and uh, how I will get a job, and how I'll I'm going to uh, enter into that uh, field. All these things he is if he is thinking about all. The, the consequences what he is there doing uh, that won't work because <laughs> there is nothing in the paper which you are writing so swami says concentrate on the work what you are doing now as a student what you should do you should study you should be disciplined we should write the exam you do our uh, whatever uh, thing what we have to do our duty the rest leave it to him that's what swami is trying to say the following example, I think, for what Dharma Karma Swami explains it very well. Uh, I I also um, uh, uh, acknowledge uh, uh, Maniyanti's point on that one. You know, the most of us we live in the past or live in the future. We don't live in the presence. You know, the, the exactly Maniyanti said, I have done something wrong when I you know, the the wrote the exam in the past. I always think if I get the low marks where I would be in the future, you know, the, if I uh, get the low mark, how I would face my parents, you know, the, all kind of thinking rather than writing the exam, you know, the, and uh, uh, that's why in you know, this, uh, the Swami also in many, many places, Swami said, live in the presence. Even you know, the, the, I came to know in one of the, you know, the um, course uh, uh, yesterday, even if we take our all of all of our thoughts in a maybe three minutes or 10 minutes thoughts, 95 percentage, it would be either the past or in the future. Only a very you know, the one or two percentage, it would be in the present. That's why we automatically lose our life, you know, the, uh, the thinking about the past, you know, the thinking about the future, then we would be losing all of our opportunities. Then we blame our karma and the, you know, the God and the parents and everybody, you know, the, that's a very nice point uh, uh, Mani Aunty brought in. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. I agree with you, Anandi, sister. Brother Dawson. Uh, 
so uh, even Swami said, when you are studying uh, that age, when you are youth, you have to concentrate on your studies. And plus you have to learn a little bit of spiritual knowledge too. And then after that, your adult time, you have to make your money. Whatever the wealth you can acquire, you can work hard for that one. Then Swami says, after 45, you have to spend your time in the spiritual side. Uh, so here, most of the people don't understand what is bliss and happiness. But here, we all know, what we people on the side center, they know what is bliss and happiness. But most of the uh, people, they are going behind to the happiness, the sensual pleasure. So they think that is the easiest one because they don't, they don't know, understand about the bliss. So they don't want to know about the uh, uh, bliss and they don't want to, uh, you, so you have to work hard for that one to understand and you have to experience it. Once you have experienced it, then you will, you will uh, spend your most of the time on the spiritual path. Thank you, Saira. Yeah, thank you. 90% of the people, you know, we all follow the same thing. We, you know, young, while we are young, we waste our time and uh, in, in, in other pursuits. Mm -hmm. And when we come to a stage, you know, oh, this is of no use, we have to take up those pursuits. Some people are like that. But spirituality need not come only at a later stage. It can come to younger persons also when they realize that this, uh, these pressures are very, very transitory. Only uh, age doesn't matter for this. I feel so. Anybody else? I think um, I kind of, uh, I, I understand, uh, I agree with uh, Mani Auntie as well. Like, uh, I think sp like Swami teaches about spirituality in school, like Auntie mentioned, like Sister uh, Vijaya mentioned, you know, it's service and all that. But I think in a different form, like understanding who you are is very important when you're young. Uh, but I mean, from what Brother Thasan said, I, I know Swami did talk about, you know, I think it's more of your dharma or at that age group. I think we discussed this before too, right? When you're a student, you focus on being a student and then you enter the samsara or family life. You focus on earning wealth and supporting yes. your family, but not being attached to that, just focusing on your duty. I think, I think that's where the spirituality comes into, not being attached to what, well, in the worldly aspects, but understanding your duty, I think that's where yeah. it falls under. But spirituality is there throughout your life. I think we are all spiritual beings, I think. Sairam, yeah. this is Sakwanti. Yeah. Yeah. Baba says, start early, drive, slowly. drive safely, drive uh, slowly and reach safely. Yes, so correct. Yes. This, is, this is his uh, saying. So we yeah. know that Spirituality doesn't come at the last stage. It mm -hmm. won't help us. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right from childhood, as far as possible, if we can train our children with satsang. Appa? Uh, hello? We, we, can, we can train our children with uh, good satsang and then in giving them good value education. That's why Swami started this Bal Vikas classes. So that right from childhood, they are introduced to some kind of uh, good values which they learn in their lives, early life, so that it can ha have a good impression when they grow up. Saira. If no one is, has got any question, we can go to the next slide, I think. I just wanted one more point there. Um, I think in yeah. one study circle, we had talked about how, um, you know, even in the grihasta phase of life, mm. um, yes, we should earn wealth. But that wealth is only to support the other phases of life, like the brahmacharis and the sannyas. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. for our own self. Correct, correct. Uh, for example, um, when we earn those that money in Gruhastha, during Gruhastha, who will take care of those sannyasis and others, other mendicants who are totally um, dedicating their lives to search for the truth? So somebody else should be there to help them out. That's exactly, uh, Kalyani, what you said. We are there to help the society for the welfare of the whole society. That is, Saira. Saira, I'm Auntie, I don't know if you have the Telugu in front of you. I was just wondering where the line that says the sensual minded are drawn by the obvious, the patent, the perceptible. What does? Yeah, 
you know, those who follow their sensual pleasures, you know, uh, everything is uh, um, available for them in the outside world, external. It's very obvious. If you want something in the um, uh, in your mind, you you get it in the market, uh, and then you know, um, the sensual minded are drawn by the obvious, the patent patent things which are available in the market, mm -hmm. and then perceptible and physical. All those things which are worldly things are always perceptible to your senses. You mm -hmm. go after them. That's what Swami is meaning. But the few who are spiritually minded yearn for the imperceptible invisible bliss of merging with the universal love absolute so worldly minded people those who are who want to go after sense of pleasures they find it very easily satisfied because if you have the resources you can satisfy any wish isn't that so the outside world is ready to provide you with all the things necessary for your pleasure but very few people look for that universal absolute and for that um, that uh, happiness, which is eternal. I, am I clear to you, Kalyani? Yeah. Thank you, Auntie. Yes. No problem. I think we should go to the next to this thing. Sorry, Kalyani, the sharing got stopped. <laughs> <laughs> you can see now? Yes. Chaturvarna. But Arjuna, there's one method of reviving Dharma, the task of task for which I have come. Yeah. That is Chaturvarnayam. Chaturvarnyam. Chaturvarnyam. The organization of the four varnas, which is caste, based on the karma work dedicated activity and the guna attributes of the people the varna system is essential for the functioning of the world it is its significance is not easy to grasp some misled themselves into the belief that it causes unrest and divides divides men from one another if the problem is reasoned out then the real truth will become clear to conclude, that is the Varna system is not beneficial shows only ignorance. Such a judgment creates confusion. I have established this organization in order to promote the welfare of the world. For example, Loka Sheshma. Loka Kshema. 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 The Varnas help man to engage them himself in acts that he finds congenial and to fulfill himself. Without it, man cannot earn happiness for a moment. For successful activity, Varna is the very breath. Those endowed with the Sattva Guna who have understood the Brahma Tattvam, who foster spiritual, moral, and progressive living, who help others to earn the bliss of visualizing the reality of their nature are the Brahmins. Those who stand by and guard the sound political system, law and justice, as well as the welfare of prosperity of the country and the moral order laid down for the people and who keep under control the wicked and the immoral and come to the rescue of the weak and, it, and the distressed, these are the Kshatriyas. Those who store and supply within proper limits to the pro people at large, the wherewithal for happy physical living are Vaishyas, those who lay the foundation for human welfare by service activities and provide the strength and sinews are sudras. I have laid down these four varnas in this manner. If these varnas carry out their assigned duties, humanity will attain all around progress. As a result of this system, a division of service is brought about. The individual leads a happy, harmonious social life without any grief or fear. This Varna system is an example of the grace that the Lord has bestowed on Bharat. Okay. We can go. 
paragraph by paragraph, right? Yeah, but that's it. I think we should uh, go by paragraph by paragraph. Um, Mr. Aruna, you are asking, you know, what is dharma karma? So the first sentence itself says, but Arjuna, this is there is one method of reviving dharma, the task for which I have come. Dharma he to establish dharma only dharma samstapana artaya sambhavami yuge that's what gita uh, in bhagavad gita to revive that dharma to uh, 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 to help the society i have come here that's what chatur varnyam the four chatur chatur means in sanskrit four varnyam is the creation of the lord the four varnas so how in those days this Chatur Varna was um, uh, divided, the whole society was divided into four groups of people or categories of people is according to the gunas, according to the gunas where they were um, sattvic, rajasic and tattvic. And moreover, the services which they used to do, the division of service which was very important for a society to progress. Each and everybody cannot be a teacher or everyone cannot be a, uh, in a, a, a army man, or, a, um, or he cannot be doing the Vanija um, service, mm -hmm. that is the uh, business. And or the, the fourth group of people who do service. So each and every one had an assigned duty for themselves. To, so it, it, the society was divided and it could progress happily. That's why Krishna create, says these four Varnas I created. Varna here means actually according to the gunas, they, they go according to. The, what, what happened was this word caste was coined by the Portuguese who were in India in those days. Caste means, you know, you put a, you melt iron or you melt gold or you melt uh, silver and put it in their caste. The, it, it's in the mold. It takes, it takes the shape of the mold. Isn't that so that's how the caste system, they gave this name to our groups. It was not like that. Uh, so in those days, uh, a, a Brahmana, but, but I'll speak later on, um, the first paragraph, if there is any discussion about it, people can start. Uh, yeah, Anandi, you want oh, to say something? As I am um, Mani Aunty, so um, this, um, Varnas are based on the gunas, okay? Yeah. So um, I am. I don't know. I'm going into the details of it, but see the four guna, four varnas, and what are the gunas attached? Um, so you are saying uh, um, the uh, the uh, gunas for the Brahmins is different from the uh, Shastras and the then from for the uh, sutras I, and the. Yes. Oh, yes. So yeah. all fours are different. So what type of gunas the Brahmins will have? Then that means um, you may be understanding the uh, uh, Shastriyas having the uh, uh, not sattvic, much of the sattvic gunas. Uh, yeah. So Brahmins may be having the most sattvic gunas. So the Varnas, so they have to progress to Brahmins, then they have to um, I think that lifetime they have to be doing their duty to achieve the uh, sattvic guna to born in the Brahmin then. You know, you know, I'm you know, just thinking like that because if it's, if it's a caste is based on gunas, then we have to try and understand that. No, sister, I don't know, one, one minute. See, the, in the society, all people are not same. Some are very intelligent. Some can catch things very quickly. Some are very slow and their mind won't go to studies. They will be concentrating more, concentrating more on um, amassing wealth, collecting wealth. So, and some, you know, they are very brave and then we broad minded, broad uh, shouldered people, very huh? strong people. Such strong people are also there. And then, you know, the meek and tamasic people who don't take any initiative in the society to work or, you know, they're, they're a little lethargic. So you find these people in a society, don't you? You find it, isn't that? Some are very, very intelligent. And you know, they, are, they show a lot of interest in studies and scriptures. And then you know, they go deep into that uh, meditation and all those things. They become a group. And then the Kshatriyas who are very strong, 
who they will go they're ready to sacrifice their lives for the sake of the society and for the sake of the nation so such people are also there they become army persons kshatriya the kshatriya duties to defend the country and then third group of people are there vaishyas you know what happened they are they are um, yes, uh, brahmana kshatriya vaishya so the third group of people who are very much interested their brains work only in maths numbers how much money is there how much money is lost how much money will gain stock exchange and other things they are they are there you know some people are like that very much into it so they become vaishyas so they all are the interested. group will have all gunas then um yeah one one group will, all of us have some 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 group we know some of the four, four, four. Some, some we, okay. we know some yeah we so know some as long as that is balanced only then the caste yeah, then, can be recognized then, as a good one okay yeah, yeah then, thank you sir yeah then you know uh, what happened in those days the society was divided into according to their aptitudes their interests they they showed certain interest in, in studying so they became teachers they become brahmanas and then th- those who showed that they can uh, have a lot of strength so they became kshatriyas they ruled the countries they knew how to discipline people and then the th- other group said okay we are very good at business so we will do all the um, kinds of business so they became kshatriya yeah vaishyas and then the last one who are ready to serve all these things who help the other three uh, groups of people to do their jobs properly so they became shudras Shudra. that's how it was all decided there was no name for this caste or anything only I have, as i told you in india portuguese people came and then gave this caste name to these groups so what now it has become it is abused in the sense a brahmana son is only can be only brahmana a vaishya son only can do business a kshatriya son only can uh, go, go to army so such divisions have very hard and fast uh, divisions have taken place in our society and it it became inherent a brahmana son if you want to be a brahmana you have your parents should be brahmins so such kind of rigid uh, way of uh, dividing the society became our uh, um, actually it is a disadvantage for our this thing swami was he once says to you see Uh, to conclude that um, the varna system is beneficial so it's only uh, is not so beneficial it is so not easy to grasp so yeah. uh, that's maybe yes i can understand so so swami already said its significance is not easy to grasp so what basis it was divided it's really we have to um, understand in like a uh, realize what way it is but yeah. uh, just the gunas itself uh, not uh, yeah. defining the varnas yeah in every varnas all the gunas will be mixed yeah okay, good thank you saira and, and also um aunty i think i um in, we discussed this kind of uh, in a briefly i think one of the uh, sorry circles before as well i think sometimes just because like like if you are a kshatriya now you cannot it doesn't mean you are going to be kshatriya throughout your life you exactly. can change as well and also and also if in our like the life cycle that we talked about you know when you are a student uh, you are learning so you are in a different this thing and when you are working if you become a businessman then you become a vaishnava or sorry vaishya and then later on if you want to search for the meaning of life and become a learned man that you're going into brahman right so i yeah, think yeah. you're yeah. not you're not and as aunty mentioned just because you're born you're going to not going to be the same person or mm-hmm. you also throughout your life you can change your thing that is my understanding yes unfortunately unfortunately in india this has become a big issue only uh, if you are a brahmin you are uh, you, you should be a brahmin only if you have become a, you are the son of a brahmin so or a vaishya forever he cannot be a brahmin he does all kinds of um, uh, the things which he should not be doing but he can he be called a brahmin no <laughs> he is worse than a shudra we are doing that calling ourselves brahmin we are committing so many things which are not in our uh, nature okay anybody else so we can sorry aunty uh, sorry anna go ahead okay so uh, sairam so here the lord krishna saying because of the four varnas people are not uh, this is established by the god 
now the people are not following according to the varna so if if they would have followed then uh, there will be a peace in the society and uh, the, because of that only he came to establish again or teach what is varnas to the the important for varnas is uh, brahmin uh, vaishva uh, and sutriya and uh, satriya so so brahmins uh, they are the one they spend most of their time learning all the vedas and everything they try to educate the people so because they have they don't do any other work so that is important so uh, satriyas they take care of the country and vaishnava they are mainly they are working in the farmland uh, of, uh, you know they bring in the business and the wealth and sutra is the farming so this is a way we had it long long time ago but this this uh, varna system is no longer everyone wants to do what uh, different varnas work and everything because of that one we lost the peace in the world thank you sairam 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 i think one thing auntie i don't know maybe i'm thinking the wrong way because in the previous paragraph he talked about uh, uh, not uh, focusing on the fruits right even in mm -hmm. this varna system we do the service or we do the work but without expecting fruits of the action i think yeah. that is important as well right mm -hmm. if not then it doesn't work yeah right? I, i want to add one more thing see there are uh, sadharana dharma var, uh, varna dharma ashrama dharma varna ashrama dharma and then the last one vishesha dharma so these five groups are there if uh, we, we can we can go into that uh, little uh, in detail one is sadharana dharma as a human being what dharmas you have to follow see the uh, at each stage what what we are to follow that sadharana dharma and then comes a varna dharma you know we belong to a certain group of uh, uh, that certain category where you know we are supposed to do those duties as a, a householder now no, the householder comes later on the varna varna dharma comes then then ashrama dharma at which stage of the life you are are you a grihastha or you are a sanya uh, are a vanaprastha or are you a brahmachari all these you know these states uh, stages in our lives that is ashrama dharma so then both varna ashrama dharma both together you have the caste to which you belong as well as the stage of life where you are but uh, yeah varna ashrama dharma then then comes vishesha dharma vishesha dharma is special duties of a Yeah, for a human being, what they have to perform on um, occasions, so that is called Vishesha Dharma. So it is all. Sister Aruna was asking, you know, Dharma ka Dharma what Dharma karma. That's what last last paragraph we discussed. Uh, isn't that Dharma karma? She was yeah. asking about yeah. that. That yeah, that is it. This this four stages, you know, Varna Ashrama, Varna Ashrama Dharma, all these. De decide what kind of dharma we are we are supposed to do in a society so it is uh, you know you remember you are a grihastha supposing you are a grihastha and you belong to certain caste uh, you whatever caste you are your previous your parents said have been taught to uh, for you to follow so both is varna ashrama dharma in which stage you are and as as well as the ashrama so that you can decide and then do the karma then it becomes dharma karma you are following your dharma and you are doing your karma also according to the your uh, stage in your life and your uh, uh, satvika guna or satvik karma or uh, um, when you are busy then it becomes rajoguna also so anything else to be added by thank you thank you saira Uh, Sairam uh, Mani Aunty, I just thought about uh, even though we say the caste system is uh, really in South Asia or specifically in India, I just thought about that even in any countries, you know, the 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 we take the concept and apply, you know, the the 
all the maybe the uh, um, under the four caste system, uh, Brahmins falls under the, I thought in, if I equate in North American style or in the, the Ministry of Edu even if we take a country, Ministry of Education goes under the uh, Bra Brahmana in the, the category. And then Ministry of Defense goes under the defense, the Kshatriya category. And Ministry of Revenue and Ministry of Finance goes under the uh, 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 the Vaishya and all other services, government wow. having for other services falls under the Shutra category. So in order to have a successful, you know, the operation of a government or of a country, these four systems are undeniable. We take a different interpretation of what we have said in the past. That's why Swami is nicely explained that we have to have those systems in order to function a country or a community successfully operate. That's Correct. how I look at it. It's, it, it, it. Hello? Who is yes, speaking? Ah. You, know, you know, this universal division of the society, actually. Krishna, what he did according to the aptitude of each person, according to the gunas of each person, according to the ashrama in which he is then, he divided the whole thing. But people misused it and then say that, you know, it's a, to belong to a caste, you have to be inherent um, a Brahmin. And it will, that's how it is misused even now in India. Recently, I was there during an election. You, I came, I was, my eyes were opened on that issue, I tell you. So much of uh, Jati, what we call in Tamil, Jati. Jati means, you know, the, to which caste you are belonging. So much of caste system, this is Jat, this is Brahmin, this is OBC, this is that, this is Muslim, this is Christian. Oh, oh my goodness, according to the religion also, they are dividing. Of course, uh, I was surprised at the way, even the candidates who stand, they, they represent a, complete, a, a particular Jati. They, they represent that caste. And then they said that, that a vote will be cast uh, to, to come to him from his caste. That's how people have been misusing this. Swami defends this Varna system way because it's a grace, he says, Lord has bestowed on us. Only if we can understand the meaning, real meaning, vowed, why this foundation of a society depends, the human welfare depends on the division of the society is only for the smooth carrying of this God uh, society. Anybody else? Yeah, um, I like the way the analogy that um, Ananti brought it in to um, bring the caste system, yeah. like the whole world is uh, based on the caste and we yeah, have to understand. Course. But Swami also said, as long as you have to understand the significance of the caste system in order to understand the why God has created those caste system is very nice. You know, in order to function effectively, the caste system is needed. Yeah. Thank you so much. Krishna, Krishna in Bhagavad Gita says, for the welfare of the society, it has to be divided like this. And Swami is defending this system so much. But not that, you know, we have misused it. We have misused it and abused it, saying that, you know, a Brahmin will only get a, a post for this particular uh, this thing. Or a, a Kshatriya will go only for this. A Kshatriya need not be a Kshatriya forever. He can come to Bama. He can, if he studies scriptures, he can be a good Brahmin. That's how, you know. So this, uh, nowadays it's disappearing slowly. It is disappearing. You might have seen how the marriages are so important in each caste. We want to have our marriages in the same caste. Still we are doing that. But, may, but we don't give importance to the good nature of that person, how the alliance can take, play, can take place between two families if they are good. That's what we have to go through. Now it's going on. Now I think the society has changed a lot. The, yeah. I also thought, you know, why Swami has, you know, the, uh, when I read for, you know, the first time that paragraph, I thought why Swami has promoted this Varna system and this and that, you know, the, then 
you know, the after money auntie brought that, you know, the point, you know, this is not the really the caste system. It's, it's, it's better for the operational perspective. Then yes. I really understood what Swami really meant by this paragraph. You know, the, the, thank you so much. Swami, yes. totally depends. Hello? Yeah. Sorry, Sorry Andy, go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 Narmada, go ahead. Just no, I was, Santi, I was going to say that, you know, um, it's like I think you mentioned, if everyone wants to be a teacher, who are the students? And if everyone <laughs> wants to be a farmer, who's going to buy the crops, right? So you have to have the division in order to run a smooth system, right? And that you cannot have a proper administration if there aren't any, the separation, you know, if, if you don't have a finance division or if you don't have the, uh, you know, um, in the business division or things like that, then you cannot run an organization similar to the society. If you to live in the society, everyone has to do their own mm -hmm. certain job, not own job, certain jobs. And you can always switch. And like Aunt said before, I think, like you said, if a Brahmin son has, can only be a Brahmin or a teacher's daughter or son has to be a teacher, if teacher's daughter also can be a farmer, then it's a that that is how it should be. It's your birth and what your karma and what you are endowed on, I think. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, we all commit the same mistake whenever when we are bringing up our children. No, you should become a doctor. <laughs> Even though the, the, the child has no liking for any of the science subjects. No, no, you should become an engineer. You should become this. You should be... See, we insist on these things because we never look for the aptitude or their, what they want in their lives. We never look for it. So we just force them to uh, go to such uh, fields, you know, where they are failures, if they don't have any interest. Yeah. Anybody else? Vijaya, what your, what's your opinion about? Uh, I'm, you know, this is that point where um, the Western, you know, most people look down on Hinduism, Manti. And that's mm -hmm. why this discussion is very important. Because, you know, I used to think, you know, why the caste system and, you know, it was a degradation actually of, um, of, of people and, and uh, you know, and not understanding the, the, the relevance of it as we are going into the deeper discussion with Sister Ananti and Sister Narmada and, you know, Aruna and, and everyone here, you know, um, it's, you know, when you set this uh, point, um, Maniati, it's uh, you know, it's it, it it you can have variance in it, and I'm I'm you know, it is true in all our families when we look at ourselves, right? We do have uh, the intercaste marriages, and but there's still some people, the elders, who believe that if you're on this caste, you know, you have to do according to you know what it is done. But now it's slowly changing. It's and, changing. Uh, it's because of ignorance, you know, it's the Kali Yuga, you can say it's a Kali Yuga, it, you can say, you know, it is people didn't understand this. And I liked also the point that uh, Sister Ananti, you know, said, you know, everything, you know, when the government, the functioning is, is important, the roles we play, it's an important thing. So there is much food for thought in here. So yeah. you're thinking, you know, what will I do with my kids when they come, you know, they want to marry somebody, a Christian or a Muslim or, you know, <laughs> another caste even, you know, you, you have to think, you know, is this a good person? And, uh, very good, ma. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is so much ingrained in our uh, brains, you know, that we should look forward only for a person of our own caste. Only then we can get married. That, of course, it works out sometimes. It doesn't work out also. Both the things are probable. <laughs> and that is it. Uh, but only the difference between West and our system is, you know, we have that rigid way of saying that a Brahmin's child only can be a Brahmin. Only Kshatriya's son can only be Kshatriya. So that division, hard and rigid division, is uh, the only bane in our society. Whereas in West, they don't call themselves as a Vaisha, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Shudra, no. They, 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 they share, um, the group of uh, teachers are there. The group of people who defend the country are there. Those who take care on the business are there. 
and those who are doing some services also there. So they don't call themselves by particular name. So ours is the that caste. The word caste has become so uh, so much uh, bad things are at attached to it. Significance have uh, has been attached to it. That's why. Okay. Any other question? Uh, Sairam, auntie, I'd like to add uh, some points here because God only created only four Varnas, but the people create a thousands of caste. <laughs> That's correct. You know, and uh, because uh, if if we take the example, one example, Brahmin, they're supposed to do the three pujas and they have to learn uh, uh, all the Vedas and everything. And they're supposed to be an example for us. Because, mm -hmm. because they spend most of their time in searching for the God and teaching us the right, correct path. Now they are doing, now they are not doing the duty because of that one. And our society is going the wrong path. Yeah. Now yeah. our, uh, now different cars, Sutriya, if it takes Sutriya, now we are learning the Vedas and everything we are teaching to the new society. Even though we are, uh, even brother said, even though we are not wearing the thread, but we can be a Brahmin in this Kali Yuga. So, <laughs> we, yeah, that's all, Auntie Sairam. Sairam, Sairam. Why we are being threatened if they are Brahmins? No, 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 actually, no. Uh, we are not wearing the thread, you know, that's uh, Puno. The Puno. The Puno. And you know, Puno. Puno. I'll yeah. Thread, uh, sorry, sorry. yeah, even though we are not wearing the thread, hmm. but we can be a Brahmin with the knowledge. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Hmm. Why Puno is giving by that thread, the thread ceremony is done? Because that's only for the Brahmin caste, yeah. No, 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 sorry. Even Kshatriya Swaishyas also. also have this Puno. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. In India, they have got. They have, they have their own uh, way of putting it. It's only introducing a um, person uh, to to in, uh, to the scriptural studies. He can do scriptural studies after after Brahmachari becomes Brahmachari. Okay. Then you know he goes into that uh, studies of uh, all Vedas and scriptures. That is why it is given. But okay. uh, that uh, thread is given in all the. Um, other caste is only to make him realize that guy that uh, you are not this ordinary um, with this uh, body and soul, okay. body and uh, mind, but you are becoming you are a Brahma. You are become going to become a Brahmana, and your your studies will start to know about the real truth. That's how it is given. And also, yeah. Auntie, the, uh, the Puno, that there's a different thickness means you are at different stages of life too, right? When they, after the marriage, the first oh. when the brahmachari is given, he is only given three, three, three uh, strands. Oh. When he gets married, he gets six. Oh, okay. Uno, yeah. I think I'm, if I'm not wrong, if uh, somebody knows about it, they can come out. Saira <laughs> Mandi, uh, I also thought it's like uh, Brother Thasan, the, the Poonul is only Irdi. Uh, but we have the rights on just for the Brahmin, not for the others. That was my understanding too. But uh, uh, maybe we are not aware of the, the yeah, other. You are not. In, maybe in Sri Lanka, you are not aware of that. But in uh, India, when even Kshatriyas are given and Vaishyas are also given. Lord so, Rama wore it too, right? He's a yeah, Rama wore it. He was a Kshatriya. Right. Krishna was a Kshatriya. All of them, they wore that, you know. It is Auntie, got I really wanted to know the significance of other castes are wearing, but I, I don't think this is a good <laughs> circle to understand. But uh, really, I also came to know the other castes are wearing it today only. Thank you, Saira. You know, they are, they are given this uh, ponol just to introduce them to uh, some scriptural, spiritual studies also required for a person, even if he's a Kshatriya. Even if we say Vaishya, let him know something. There is some truth about it. We have to know that truth. Let us try. That kind of uh, initiation is given to them. That's all. But uh, yeah, but just a, just a thought there, uh, Auntie. Uh, Brahmins, there is an age, there's a time they give that. 
but yeah. I didn't know that there is another caste system also they are giving like that when they are initiating that, right? Yeah. So uh, it's uh, good to know this time at least, you know, I never thought of the, like, <laughs> we are coming to know, to, I am coming to know only today, in the, like yeah. and Dawson. thank you, Saira. For, for a Brahmin at the age of eight, a boy is given. And uh, I have come across in other castes, even girls are also given. Yeah, girls are also given that um, uh, ceremony of giving a th thread. Thereafter, they become... So that thread is, is to initiate some kind of... Um, spiritual studies. Spiritual thing. Oh, studies. okay. A second, a second birth. It's called the second birth. First, you are born as a Shudra. Everybody, whether they belong to Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudra, or Brahmin, we are all Shudras when we are born. Only when that... Uh, um, Punol is given, then he is born again. Second born, it's called. So he becomes a Brahmin. So they are <laughs> learning some kind of spiritual side of it. Okay, thank you, Saira. Yes, Mr. Vijaya. Um, Saira, Andy, thank you for bringing this up. You know, several years ago, I came across, uh, you might, some of you might know, Pandit Sri Ram Sharma Acharya. Uh -huh. uh, he was a realized soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it really touched my heart because we had sisters and brothers in the SAI organization in New York, in, in Connecticut, uh, mm -hmm. you know, who, who brought this thing that he was, uh, he's passed on now, but they used to do that organization and used to do the Gayatri uh, mm -hmm. with the thread ceremony for all people who are interested. And um, you did the Gayatri initiation into the Gayatri, like uh, right. the money is saying. And, uh, you know, I was just so taken. He's written so much on the spiritual wealth of India, you know, of, mm -hmm. of people. So anyone can go. Anyone, women also can. I thought women couldn't go. Uh, mm -hmm. But women also can do it, you know. And, and But you take on this vow that, you know, you'll do the Gayatri and yeah. uh, do good work, Seva. Saira. Our Swami, our Swami has given thread ceremonies open in them, whole lot of people. Not they need not be Brahmin. They were they all mm -hmm. they were given um, yeah. Puno in um, in the Bandir in Ashram, so Prashanti Nilayam by Swami. Swami used to bless them with a Puno. That is uh, not necessarily that a Brahmin should get all all children used to go after the age of eight, boys especially. So, so fact, uh, sorry, ma. So, do you think Arjuna also wears the thread? Because yeah, then he must, right? So, Rama did, Sri Rama did, and uh, today, by the way, is Rama Navami, right? So, it's yeah, so today, proper to, talk about yes, this. Yeah, to remember Rama so much today is Sri Rama Navami. Yeah. So Arjuna also did, and you know, so that's why for them their education was so balanced. Yeah. You had the spiritual, you had the, the your, your caste, you know, your, your dharma. Um, yeah. So it's, a, it's very important for us also to remember because, you know, if you want to take the thread, yeah, there, there, there is a way to do it. So not to feel that I'm a woman or I'm a different caste that I cannot do it. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. This is a very deep conversation. Thank yeah. you. You remember, you remember in Ramayana, all the brothers, Rama, Lakshmi. All did it. Yes. All the four of them are taken by Vishwamitra uh, to initiate into their uh, um, um, education, Brahmachari. They become Brahmacharis. After they go, they, they go to Guru yeah. and then they learn everything. So that, that's how. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this is for Nash. So, okay. okay, go ahead now. No, no, I asked. You changed the page, so I asked. Okay. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Kalyani. Oh, I was just going to ask, Auntie, the word varna itself, it means color? Or? Color, color. Varna means color. Color mm -hmm. of that sattvic, white. Rajas is red. And then um, tamas is black. The colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not exactly white, means purity. Sattvic guna is always pure. And Rajoguna is so dynamic. They run here and there. They're always on the move active that's called red red color and then the last one is thamasic lethargic is always represented with the black so the colors varna means also colors and um you were mentioning about the like the the five different types of dharmas like the varna dharma ashrama dharma varna ashrama dharma yeah. like yeah. so 
if you are born to a certain parents who do a certain profession or in a certain caste, mm. that would define your varna dharma. Um, but I guess what we are saying in this conversation is that you can change that. You can do a different varna dharma. Is that right? Right. Correct. 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 Okay. So, so it all depends on the ashrama where you are uh, in, the, in your stage. Are you in a brahmascharya, grahastha, or a vanaprastha, or a sannyasi? These four ashramas are there for all of us. We have to go through it. And in which ashrama, for example, take me, for example, I am a mother, a grandmother, a mother-in-law, or a sister. In what is my duty as a mother-in-law in, in this place, in London, whatever, where I'm living? I have to do my duties as a mother-in-law, what, what I can do. Or a great grandmother, what I can do, I should do. So it depends on the each of, uh, for example, if when I am in this stage, I should be one of actually, but I'm still, still I'm involved in this uh, sansara. I can't go into the forest and say that, no, I'm leaving all my duties and I'm going there. No, I cannot do that. But I can be one of Prastha remaining here in this uh, samsara itself if I am detached to all the things. That is, uh, that is the thing. It depends on the... Uh, we can develop that sattvic guna. And of course, as a doctor, you have to be dynamic and you have to be active for your uh, profession. At the same time, bring in that sattvic guna there and then you are a mother. You, as a mother, what you do to your child or do to your husband, that also is very important. So it's a combination of our Varna Ashrama and then our own Varna Ashrama Dharma and then our Gunas, Sadhana Dharma we are doing or Vishesha Dharma we are doing. So it depends on that. Anybody else? If you are born, um, for example, if you're born as a Shudra and um, you, ha you have a Varna Dharma based on your, what you were born as, um, but then you could, um, if you, you could do the Dharma of a Kshatriya. Yeah. Um, so is that going against your Varna Dharma if you start? No, 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 not at all. And that's why your Varna Ashrama Dharma, it, it became you are belonging to a certain caste or something, you're coming from certain uh, background, your profession, your father's profession or your family's pro profession. But at the same time, you want to do some service in a, um, the, where you want to do, whatever service you want to do, you can do. That doesn't mean that we are going to become um, Shudras or become, become Kshatriyas or something. You, you can do but. One more thing, Auntie, in the first paragraph, Swami has said, the Varnas are based on the work only, yes. not on the birth. So that itself tells you, you what you how, how work you can move on to the different Varnas. Yeah, that, that, that you, it uh, And the Guna. Swami yeah. says, Guna. Guna. Guna so it, it doesn't, uh, anywhere, Swami didn't say, it's from birth, the Varnas are defined. No, no. Oh. That, that is where yes. we are making the mistake. We, yes. Unfortunately, we are making the mistake. We are making the mistake from the birth, but uh, according but, to the Krishna's thing and the Swami's word, it's uh, from the work on it. Thank you. But, but the, unfortunately, the whole society is misusing the word Varna. When then, you know, we are so strictly uh, going at, against the concept of the Varna, what Krishna thought or Swami thought. Like Auntie also mentioned, right? Like when you're born, you're all, we're all sutra. So when you take the thread ceremony, only you're going into this. Then... Yeah, <laughs> you are initiated into the next ashrama. <laughs> okay. Sai Ram, Auntie. Sai Ram. Uh, I don't want to take this away, divert, but um, we are talking about the caste and the religion. So I have a doubt, Auntie, um, about the inter caste marriage, even though I'm born in a a family in Hindu and we are vegetarians, born vegetarians and stuff. But after coming here, uh, my family members uh, who born here, their children, is in, <laughs> in their marriageable age. So we know some people are going to marry different religion and they are not, we don't even need to talk about the caste there. They're totally different ethnic groups. 
So I hear one Swami is talking about inter-caste marriage. Could mm. you comment on that? Because I got <laughs> young children at my house right now. So what is Swami saying on this? Sorry about it. I, I don't have any authoritative this thing to comment upon it. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're good people, I think we Swami, whatever he said was, uh, so by Swami himself has done uh, in his presence, many intercaste marriages have taken place. Swami, mm -hmm. them. it all depends on uh, how the adjustment takes place between the couple. That is the most important thing. Of course, as you say, uh, we are an aversion to non-veg food. We come from a certain background, from cultural background we have. And we find it very strange when we find, meet others who are coming from a different cultural background and different uh, food habits. It is very difficult mm -hmm. to adjust to these things. But I feel first thing is if they're, if they're going to be a couple, food should be sorted out first what kind of food mm -hmm. they are going to have. Or mm -hmm. you can adjust that adjustment. If it's there, that's fine. That's fine. And then the culture, what culture you are belonging to, those two things, if they can agree on each other, uh, um, some, some uh, middle way, then I think the marriage can work out, can uh, take place and then it can work out. And some in some cases it fails. Saira, my sister, um, I was listening to a podcast in the uh, Swami's Media Center, the radio side. Um, yeah, that's why I was got confused. Swami yeah. said, I say, okay, Sarva Dharma, but I didn't say my no, students no, no. to actually, go and marry. One of the students, actually, they kind of talked about it because he said that, you know, even in Swami students and all that, this kind of questions come. So they had a talk show where they brought in different um, quotes from Swami and whatever and Swami has said. So maybe you might want to, I can share that because in that uh, there were some examples and answers and it's actually fulfilling the place with where what auntie just said also how there's no rigidness there. It's more on understanding and sometimes it's your karma and birth and you know how each, everyone is connected. So it's more of an understanding than that there's no rigid uh, hard and fast rule only within the marriage you can do this or do that. So it was more of a young people kind of talking and mostly Swami students and based oh. on what Swami has said. So, um, Narmada, it would be great if you can share the link for us. Sorry, yeah, auntie, please, go ahead. Uh, man, that's what I was also. Share the link with us. Yeah, I have to look for it, sister, but I can uh, maybe I can post it in the next uh, next. Group. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like auntie said, when I'm visiting uh, one of my, uh, even my own sibling, like, oh, I said, oh, Thursday, and we're here you guys, <laughs> because uh, uh, like daughter-in-law going to eating all this steak, and all I said, oh my God, Thursday, like that, you know? So, and I told it's, it's not my job to comment, but uh, it's going to be very difficult. But uh, yeah, at the end, it's based on love and I will definitely remember whatever you said, Dan. Thank you so much. Swami is one um, uh, advice to all the couples, what I have heard Swami himself saying, understand and then adjust. Mm -hmm. So that's what Swami said, understand. The couple should understand each other, then adjust. These two words Swami has uh, spoken several times for uh, when the wedding takes place. So I don't know, it, it might help our, all of us to come across this, uh, to overcome this question of how to adjust ourselves. Thank you, Sairam. Yeah, Sairam. This is a fast world and everything goes very fast. And that's what like the disaster, <laughs> used to be everything slow and they listen, counseling, everything now doesn't work out. Just leave to them. They have to decide, the children, they have to decide what is, just explain the differences and leave to them. They would take their decision. Thank you, Saira. So, Saira Monty, back home is easy to follow our, uh, our tradition and everything. But if we, are, if we are living in North America, so our parents' duty is to teach them uh, what is right and what is wrong. That's what we are sending our kids to Balavia class, learn something. After some age later, it's very difficult to teach them. But when they uh, when they put them into the proper school, like Balavia class and everything, they know what is right and wrong. 
But auntie, whatever you said, understand, adjust. Yes, first you have to understand. Then only you can adjust. You cannot be adjust and understand. That's the wrong way. No. You have to understand and you have to adjust. Thank you, Saira. But our children are caught in a, just like a sandwich. They are in between two cultures. When they go out, they have to adjust to the Western culture. When they are at home, we force them, we insist that we should follow our own culture. So our children, you know, you, to give them an identity, it is uh, quite a difficult thing. First of all, they have to find out their own identity to defend themselves when they are in society, when they are outside. It's so difficult for them, for, the, for our children, I feel. Anyway, we are all facing the same thing. But we, as far as possible, we give them proper uh, uh, lessons in the value, in uh, human values, and then ask them to decide which, whatever they want, want to follow. That's all we can do. But it is very important for uh, for the parents to give them, give the children an identity that you belong to this culture. That we have to tell them. Sairam. Yeah, 4.20 it is. Anybody else wants to say? Maybe one little thing before we wrap up. Uh, Sister Kalyani asked about whether if we are in certain varna, whether you know, can we move to a, can we do another profession or another you know, the category of work? Uh, I just thought about that. Even we wouldn't believe that you know, if a person served for in in one of the forces, you know, it could be police or army, mainly the the defense forces. If they do if they serve for a certain number of years, that could be even five or six years. If they are capable of doing another job, once they retire after five years, in government, any category of job, first priority for them, you know, the, I just thought about that. It doesn't matter what kind of work they have done in the forces, they would be given. If, if there are five successful candidates, you know, they, they, they would be given the first priority. You know, they, oh. even the government, they have made that kind of, even you know, they, if you are in the forces, you would be in lifelong, you would be in the forces category. No, if you want to choose another profession, that they would be given the first priority because of their sac sacrifice in their services. Yeah. I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. Defense of a situation is so important. The, they belong to the highest category, whether not the Brahmins or anybody. They defend our country at the cost of their lives. So that is, I think the government has recognized it. But I don't think in India we have this system. If you are belonging to the army, of course, uh, there are special opportunities for army children, uh, army people's children, and they, they, have given, they are given um, a special uh, distinct opportunity for them to go to the, any... The, profession they want to. Okay. I am, um, uh, Auntie, if uh, we are going to wind up, I just want to make an announcement. Okay, please go ahead. Okay. Sairam, everyone, uh, the, as you all know, uh, the zone committee is planning to go to Puttapati. Uh, that, uh, that pilgrimage trip is on July 10th to July 17th and the registrations are open and there is a designated website for it. Um, for, for the further details, all the emails has been shared with all the centers. And if you don't have one, and if you need any details, please contact me um, or any other SSGC members. Uh, they may have the details and they, we have an um, upcoming, uh, pathway to Pati Bhajan, that is, we have decided to offer to Swami in regards to the pilgrimage trip. So the second session is happening on April 16, that is coming Saturday from 5 p.m. It's a two hours bhajan. So I encourage everyone to join to the pathway to Pati Bhajan, whether you are joining the trip or not. This is a sadhana and we encourage everyone to join for this pathway to Pati Bhajan. Thank you. Sairam. Sairam, Sairam. 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 Sairam
Oh, Sairam, uh, yes, uh, sorry. It's, it's happening at Scarborough Sai Center. Um, uh, this is from 5 p.m. and April 16th. Thank you, Sairam. Thank you very much. Thank you. We shall close. Sairam, Auntie. Auntie, we are, uh, we are very blessed to have you in, in our study circle, and especially you are with the Baba, child, youth, and adult, and senior. So I would like to listen to your Paramam Pavitram. You are the one. We are blessed. We are blessed you to have in the study circle. Can you say that, and we can close it? Yeah. Oh, Thank okay. you, Sairam. I hope everybody will be <laughs> Yes, Auntie. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> The original tune which came to me from Swami is little different from what you people are deciding, deciding, chanting now. Anyway, I'll sing it in the original. Mm. Paramam Pavitram Baba Vibhutim Paramam Vichitram Leela Vibhutim Paramartha Mishtartha Moksha Pradatam Baba Vibhutim Idamashrayami Paramam Pavitram Baba Vibhutim Paramam Bichitram Leela Vibhutim Paramartha Mishtartha Moksha Pradatam Baba Vibhutim Idamashrayami Baba Vibhutim Idamashayami Om Shanti 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 Sairam Sairam. Thank you very much, brother. Okay. Sairam. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. so much, Sandy. It's an excellent rendition and the excellent uh, study circle. Uh, Shall we close with the Samasta Loka, please? Okay, please. Kalyani. Kalyani. Oh, Aunty can do. <laughs> Paral Mani Pad. Samasta Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samasta Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Samasta Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Oh, shanti, shanti, shanti.